Hey, what's going on, guys? Talk Nerd City here, back for another podcast, and we are coming back with... Is this the Christmas special, Chris? Definitely. This man needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce you anyway. Mr. Darren Huckabee, an absolute pleasure to have you along. Glad to be here, glad to be here. Good handshake. Put it off for a while, but now I'm here. You, I'm on. You are? Um, w- did Russ put in some good words, or...? No, I saw him on there, so I thought I could do better than that. <laughs> okay, and um, you know what? I'm going to go straight off the bat here. Now, I, I believe Chris mentioned that Simon Lappin has been the only guest so far to bring gifts along, to bring food. He brought some Tesco cookies. They weren't Tesco finest, but they'll do. Mr. Huckabee rocks up with not only a Terry's chocolate orange, but a Christmas present. I'm a different level on it. Now that level. is, uh, uh, this is quite, I'm actually a bit emotional, Jack. This really is something special, isn't it? And the wrapping. <laughs> it's not something special, let me tell you, it's not. <laughs> the wrapping is particularly impressive as well. And I can see you've gone to quite some, some distance with this kind of yeah. wrapping paper as well. It's not kind of nice stylish, stuff. yeah. If you've really ever good. seen me wrap presents up on Twitter, you know it, ain't me. So, <laughs> was it Miss Hux? <laughs> Mrs. Hux did that for me, dear. Should, 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 should we go again? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, okay. Because one of them's. One pound better than the other, so I don't know which one's which because we've wrapped Ooh, them open. So interesting. Okay. Right, let's get these open. I think it's a Norwich City nine. Love it. The link oh, after wow. the gift set. I don't think they're both the same actually. Aren't now this, now this is just what I want for Christmas. I tell you what. Thank these, you. These very are not, much. but everyone needs some links Africa in their life. Yeah, I agree. You always used to get one of them at Christmas that you didn't really want, but you yeah, end up using yeah, so yeah. it's so that's what you got. Your long lost grandma buys these, it because she doesn't know you very well. And, that a, kind of and it's socks it. as well. If you get a pair of socks, you're buzzing. Yeah. No, I'm very happy with that. Thank you, Mr. Huckabee. Darren, anyway, let's uh, let's move out just so we've got the microphone in. in um, how's life? What, how, what's going on? Since, uh, um, since my... Since, since the thing. Yeah, what, are we, since what are we calling it, by the way? I don't know, just... Uh, Leaving. We leaving, put it here, leaving. Let's call it yeah, leaving. We put it here on the official agenda, your dismissal. <laughs> I wasn't dismiss, dismissed. No, it wasn't. Okay, no, no. good, good. Just to clarify. So, what have you been up to? Uh, I've done a little bit of radio. I did, good, uh, yeah. did the Forest Away game. Obviously not the best result. Uh, I'm doing Brentford on Friday. I did a bit of talk sport mm. last week. So, I won't say I've been overly busy, but I've been getting by. And uh, it's, it's been good. It's been different. Uh, you know, I played for a lot of clubs. So if I wanted to go down that route, I'm sure there'd be plenty of angles for me to do that kind of stuff. So at the minute, I'm quite happy just to get ready for Christmas and you know hopefully uh, watch, a few, watch a few games. And you know, I went to watch Lincoln against Coventry, yeah. which was nice. So I went to a few old players and old faces. So sit yeah, in the stands. Why don't you sit in the stands for a few games? You up for it? Yeah, I do, I do sit in the stands. You do? Yeah. Season tickets in the stands. I've got a season ticket. You've got season ticket. I've got three season tickets since the day I left. The day, the day, I, the day Rhoda got rid of me. I got three tickets straight oh, in the middle God, of... Oh, God, don't even start so it's me happened on that. Twice, but anyway. Don't even start me on that. I did see your tweet about um, your season ticket being moved for the Chelsea game. Have I didn't know what was going on. I got left through the post. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know... I'm thinking... What, they're moving you to the singing section? Well, I think Chelsea must be having all the, all the stand on it. Yeah, I think um, they've got quite a large allocation, haven't they? Yeah, but I'm mm-hmm. right in the middle. Not, not, I mean, not even to the halfway line, are they? Surely. Maybe they just thought you'd be trouble. Well, yeah. maybe. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the recent games. We didn't record a podcast last week Chris and, and it was the week we won we beat Sheffield Wednesday yeah, it was so much of a shock that we had to take a break <laughs> we just couldn't we couldn't not talk negatively I mean it was a good win wasn't it Darren it well the second half was the second half I thought we played really well uh, I thought they were better first half I thought probably Nelson got bullied a little bit didn't hold the ball very well but second half we were much better Madison was good all the way through the game mm. as he has been most of the season as always yeah and uh, we we just had a bit too, bit too much from going forward in mm. the end. They just kind of like stopped playing and looked like they camped in trying to go for a 1 0 win. Mm. In the end, we, you know, once they nicked a couple of goals, but we scored late on to make it 3 1. For me, they look like a team that's losing their manager. Yeah, well, he came out and he, he was basically talking about rubbish, wasn't he? Just saying, oh, yeah, we were, we were pretty just, good and we deserved some, but no, he didn't. We were yeah. poor second half. But it is interesting to see, as you say, it was only really that second half where we looked good and the, the change in mood going from the start of that Sheffield Wednesday game into the Leeds game was so drastic considering we only really played 40 minutes of good football mm. and it shows how quick it could turn if we do put maybe a couple of wins together. It's all down to consistency, isn't it? This league has always been like that and um, it's a tough one. I mean, looking at the fixtures you've got coming up, we've just, for me, you've got to win all three. You've got to win all three. Four. Well, I mean, going up to the Christmas deadline, mm. Jack, which I've set. Okay. Brentford won't be, won't be easier. Yeah, uh, no, the, exactly. The two, the two away games, 
you know, they're in a position now where they have got to stop winning their own games. <clears throat> They've got to. So yeah. whoever come, goes there is going to be in for a, a bit, well, they should be in for a bit of a, a scrap, mm -hmm. made, made difficult, a fight. You know, will we uh, stand up to that? We slipped up I against Burton last time. We got bullied at Burton last time. We I, did. So I think you mentioned it before, consistency has been a massive thing. I, I think if you look as individually, you know, over the season, who's really been consistent in that team? Madison, mm. Angus. Yeah. Nobody else. Yeah. And that and that's a big thing. You, you know, you can't just have two players being consistent, can you? And and it's not just that. It's the players who aren't in the in the squad. You know, Yannick's and Murphy's been in and out. Jerome. As a manager, what are you going to get? It's mm. it's really difficult at the moment because, like I say, there's nobody that's you know you don't know what you're going to get. Mm. You know, I've played in teams with players where whatever was happening, you knew what you were going to get week in week out. As in Adam Drury's, uh, yeah, Gary Oates, Mark Edwards, people like that. They, they, they're going to give you seven no, out of ten. They're going to, they're going to yeah. do the job. Yeah, and they pass you the ball. And it makes it, 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 it makes it makes it easier because at the minute you go into matches and you kind of don't know what team Norwich is going to turn up. You don't mm. know are they going to be the team that played second half against Sheffield Wednesday or was it the team that have been you know, pretty bang average mm. most of the season so it's, it's difficult so whose fault is that because are you saying we're lacking players who can put a consistent run together or is it Farker not being able to put a consistent side out because I saw an interesting stat the other, the other day that we fielded the least amount of players but sort of something like made the most changes so it's a small group but it's never the same group and is it is it the manager's fault? Is it the players' fault for this kind of slight lack of consistency? I'd say it's a bit of everything. You know, it's uh, obviously the manager has, has got a set way he wants us to play, and it can be a bit slow and I won't say boring, but a bit slow and it's a, everything's not much build up. There's not much width. There's not mm. much pace in the team, mm -hmm. and so it's difficult in that way. You know, it, we're playing some games with four tens. Yeah, there you got Madison Pritchard. Now he's back. Yeah. And Mario is a, a ten. Yeah, don't don't tell, don't tell me he's an only midfielder yeah. or a wide player. He ain't. And Wes Hulham has always probably been the, the best number ten in Norwich for ten years. So mm, some games, some games you playing with four tens, and no matter how good they are, if you're the other team, you can set up and it's play you know, against it, yeah. Well, because we've got no pace, we've, everything's too mm -hmm. slow. So if everything's in front of you, and we've got four to tens that are playing and keeping it, and it's sometimes pretty easy to stop us. Mm. I mean. I think I've, I've, I've written it down here actually because I wanted to kind of address it and you know we're often outside the, the ground afterwards maybe digging at Murphy or something because he hasn't put the best performance in. You come from a place where you, you're justified you know you've got probably the best winger in Norwich City history. Yannick Vilchka, Josh Murphy, players like this have they been delivering this season? Occasionally I think Murphy has. Mm. Uh, Murph's got all the attributes to be a very, very good player. I mean, it's interesting because he scored seven goals, yeah. which is a good return, but you look at it and you go, has he had the best my, season? My, my biggest issue with, especially with Murph, but Yannick to some extent, Murph doesn't play like a wide man anymore. Right. I don't see him go past people. I don't see him go past people. I don't see him cross the ball. How many balls did he put in the box? Mm. How many chances did he create? How many people does he run out in the box? That's what a wide man does yeah. for me. Like, like the... You know, it's a different level, but Sane and Sterling, mm. how many times are they going past people in the yeah, round of the box? Yeah. How many times are they pulling the ball back to people? How many crosses are they putting in? We just tend to be playing with just all tens. And you know what is ridiculously frustrating for me, uh, and I think it's just the club in general, it'd be interesting to get your take on it, especially as it's you that I'm going to be talking about here. I don't think we've ever replaced Darren Huckabee. And I'm not just saying that because he's been sitting here. I think we had an opportunity with Nathan Redmond, a big opportunity, but for me, I thought his, his, his final ball was poor. And as you've said, Darren, you know, Yannick has arguably got the right assets. You know, he's a big lad, he's quick, but he's not got the confidence to beat players. And, and Josh quite isn't quite there with that final ball as well. And that's yeah. a massive thing for me. You've, you've let a Huckabee go. We've never replaced him. Obviously, it's a wee bit before, slightly before your time, Jack. But for me, massively frustrating that. It's, it's strange though, isn't it? Because... On paper, we've got some fantastic wingers, and, and we know Murphy can play. We know Yannick can play. It, it does feel slightly though that it... we've got some great players. Full stop. You know, Wesley yeah. and Madison. Obviously, Pritchard's a good player. We know that Nelson. You know, when his head's on it, he's one of the best. But we well, consider one of the best strikers in the league. Yeah. But it's getting consistent. Mm. Where you know, I don't see, ever see teams being put on the back foot. I don't see people running at people. I don't see it's just everything's too slow in the build up and. And that's so what it's the system, is it? Well, a little bit of system, yeah. But also, like, it sounds daft, but if I'm Murphy, I will do what makes me look good. 
Okay. Because right? I have to, because that's my job. Yeah. Right? You know, I, I, I do what, if I'm a player, what I feel makes me look good and makes the team better. Okay. So if that's Murphy going a bit wider or whatever and, and taking people on and getting balls in the box and running at people on a 1v1, because that's really what his job is. Mm, 100%. You know, sometimes he's coming in the pitch, he's got three, four players there, it's too, too congested. Go out wide and get yourself in 1v1 situations, it makes it a lot easier. And if, if that's all I, that's, if I'm a winger, I'm thinking I'm going to get myself one on one. I am quicker than the other bloke. Yeah. And Murph is normally quicker than who he's playing against. Hundred percent. I just think I don't know if we're trying, trying to make too too complicated. I don't know mm. if it's we're trying to be too clever. You know, Yannick and Murph. The reason why they don't play is because at the minute they're not consistent enough and their end product isn't good enough. Mm. But the manager's not stupid. If, if if he thought they were going to play and get balls in the box and create chances, mm. they would play. Have they got their heads in too much of a, a system, a psychology, a, a, you know, a, a philosophy? And can they? Should they not just just bloody do it? Can they not just crack on and just deliver, do the basic stuff? Because that's what Mario Vrancic has come out and said that the gaffer's now telling them, just do the simple stuff. And I think for me, that's where we've lacked. I mean, you've touched on a really good point there about coming out wide. I thought. Josh did that ridiculously well against Aston Villa. Scored, I think, was it two goals away at Aston Villa? And he looked brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. But we've not seen it since. I think to, I think to kind of give a bit of, cr- or not credit, but the reason I feel that Josh isn't going wide or Yannick isn't going wide is because no one's in the bloody box to cross it to. Yeah. Well, that's Nelson's off, yeah. off, off the Nando's drop deep. He's it's all well and good going wide and we're delivering balls on occasions, but there's no one in there. But the thing is, Nelson shouldn't have to drop deep if you've got three tens playing. Yeah. Because all he's doing is dropping into the areas where they're meant to have their space yeah. and they're doing the work. It's just it's just a little bit frustrating, obviously, being a winger and knowing that how effective I think Murph could be. And mm. he has been yeah, in spells. Mm. And Jacob was just the same when he was there for a little bit. We well, did well enough to get a twelve million pound move, so he must have been someone yeah, doing something. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just think everything's a little bit too slow, and we, we're not getting the best out of certain players. And I think if Yannick does play, he's, he's going to have a lot more in product because that's the reason he, he's all power and pace, but he gets in. You don't know where he's going to put a good ball in, or he's going to hit some and, what, and what is the what is the difference between the team that you played with? So, for example, if you were in this team right now, would you be, be happy with that, or what, what's the kind of contrast between the team that? you were in and the team that's playing right now? I would say that the team I joined at Norwich was a hardened championship team mm-hmm. with people who had no, knew how to play the league. Playing, uh, Malky. Yeah, Adam Joy, best left back in the league. Mark Edworthy, been promoted four or five times. Mm. Straight away, that's it. You've got a side back four. You know, they don't have to be flasher. They don't have to look like they Robert can go Green. forward. <laughs> yeah, Robert Green, yeah. England international. <laughs> yeah. So straight away, you've got a great, great balance. In front of that, you've got Gary Old, who could run all day and he would do the work that nobody else wanted to do. Mm. And then you add a little bit of players who can play a little bit in front of that. So you've got, yeah. you've got Paul McVeigh, Liam McKenzie who will scrap and fight, uh, Svensson who could do his, do his thing, me on the left. So we had players that could hurt teams, but we played a certain way. You know, we, we, we attacked teams. We attacked teams mm. and we also knew that we were pretty good defensively. We weren't going to concede many goals. And at the minute, the problem Norwich got is we don't look like scoring and we don't look like stopping the other team scoring. And yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're in that thing, it's not like you can hang your head on one thing because we had a little run where we kind of tightened it up a little bit. He put yeah. two old midfielders in and we'll say, oh, great, we're not conceding. But we didn't really create any chances in them yeah, games either. We won 1 0, we nicked a goal in there. Yeah. So we've got to try and find a balance where the, our best players are producing. And when you, when you say kind of, I, I hear it a lot from kind of, Ex pros and current pros. When you're in a team of people who know the league, what do you mean by knowing the league in terms of a hardened championship squad? Because you know, what's the difference between that? And well, there's a, well, there's a time where you've got to go and edit and kick it. There's a time where you've got to go and put it in behind another team. You know, there's a time where you've just got to fight and hold on. There's also a time where you look, you feel like you you can just attack, attack, attack. You know what? I played in front of Adam Jory, and I truly believe that whoever they yeah, had to back. Well, whoever they. It was, I could just go and attack because mm. I know for a fact the fullback could not cope with me yeah. and I'm pretty sure the right mid, right midfielder for them was either worried about me getting the ball or he wasn't good enough to go past and draw it so sometimes I, I left him exposed but I also thought he can deal with it. you can deal with him <laughs> if I get the ball the, this fullback cannot deal with me so are you worried if you're playing with Evo Pinto right now are you worried because he bombs forwards too much or not because Jury didn't really well, do don't that mind, don't mind if he bombs forward as long as he creates chances Okay, and doesn't concede goals in Brent. Okay, but you could say he's a modern day fullback, but you've got to be able to defend a little bit. Mm. You know, we're only clean sheets for this season, not many, is it? 
and it, they all came oh, in that oh, round, yeah, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we've, I think we've, what, we've scored was it 21 goals this season? Third, third lowest scorers in the league. Yeah, so th- that tells you something because I think last year we were top, joint top goal scorers, weren't we? Yeah. So, and we've lost Halton mm. in an attacking mm. sense. Who else has gone in an attacking sense? Kyle Laffey. Yeah, he did. <laughs> um, it's got a good goal at the weekend, actually. Yeah, but it's Scottish football, don't count. <laughs> he also won a few bets as well. Mm-hmm. Jack. I would love. Some. I know how much you no, love. No, I know. This. I know Hux is an athlete, but I do. Oh, don't normally chocolate. Okay. By the way, yeah, yeah, I've got to mention something. Right, so I did an interview the other day, not for Talking or a City Mind, with Mark Frothingham, and he was all he did was compliment you the whole time. Hux is an athlete. Hux no. Also, apparently, you never had lunch. You only had breakfast and dinner. I didn't have breakfast. You didn't have breakfast either. Do you eat? Is that the secret <laughs> to success? I used to have a really strange regime about how I did did my stuff. And mm. Like it was just even at Christmas, nothing changed. So as soon as the season started, like the same things every day. Prepare to a game every week. So it just exactly the same, nothing changed. So what was it then? Talk us through it. The food. Well, no, early week it would be nothing too hot. Have a salad and chicken or something. But then at the end of the week, if the game was on Saturday, Thursday would be like a, a pasta dish, just load up with cards. Friday would be uh, chicken and mash. Right, you're the same thing every, every day, every, every week. Yeah, every week because that's just how I prepared for games. So I knew that that's I'd... fair play because you know what your body's going to perform with. Yeah, and then I sat there because I didn't have pre-match. I mean, I also used to have pre-match at twelve o'clock. I used to get up at eight in the morning and have what I needed then because I didn't like. I like to go into games feeling light, yeah. so I didn't want to class. What used to see Mulkey, he'd have like a big pile like that. <laughs> Two and a half hours before we kicked off, I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> So I had to eat eight o'clock in the morning, but when we had the twelve o'clock kickoff, I mean I had to get up at two o'clock in the morning to eat and then go back to bed. So I used to be like a bit weird like that. And you didn't have breakfast. I never had breakfast. Why? I don't. I just didn't. I just didn't like feeling heavy when I was running or training. So and it was that routine that you. you Do you have breakfast on. now? No. Really? No, no. You never. You honestly, you don't have breakfast. No. I mean, fair play. Your performances did the talking. So just the fair way enough. I did it. Uh, everyone's different, and yeah. Obviously, it took me a, t- a long time to get that uh, the way it was, but it's just what worked for me. And now the diet is beer and protein. But still train, still train hard, still do. I know. I see. I see you on them runs. 60, 60 k a week, maybe. Runs to the bar. Sixty k a week. Yeah, every week. If I ain't got a bets game on Sunday, so I'll take it a bit easier. On, on normal week, I do fifty to sixty k a week. How is that, by the way? Jack was huffing and puffing after five k on Sunday in the gym. Oh, I did have a roast in the, in the stomach and a couple uh, of... See, that's why I thought you don't eat. Easy, <laughs> there you go. Chicken and mash is what you need. Mm. Talk me through these Vets games on a Sunday then. What's it? What's the kind of opposition players? Because if I'm a right back, are you still playing the same position? Yeah, I still play that for a game. If I'm a right back, <laughs> I'm shitting myself. It's is that the reaction? It, it, sometimes, <laughs> it's, it's actually good value. The, the, the lads we play against, for the most part, are very respectful and... You know, enjoy the playing and the. But it's yeah. more the. They don't try and half you know. I've got a lot of time to get kicked yeah, but I've been used to it. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's not true, really. True. But it's just with the lads that I, I play with. I've got a great bunch of lads, and you know, it's not just about the game. It's about the you know the, the pint you have after them, and just just being as in a team again. Were you? Yeah. So that's you know, that's what it's for. Did you miss that when you retired, having that kind of team? Yeah, I think element. you. Do, I think you do. Yeah. Anyway, I think you know the biggest part of me not being at Norwich now is not seeing the players and mm. other coaches every day. You know, that's a. That's the biggest downside of you know me not being there anymore. So that seems like a seamless transition into um, let's get onto it. You leaving the club, your, your role with the under twenty threes. It was a big shock, I think, to fans yeah. um, and, to, and to you as well. It was a big shock for me, yeah. Um, because yeah, well, obviously went into the meeting, I didn't see it coming. But the club have got to you know as it's it sort of been well stated that the club have got to make some big financial decisions. Mm. And lucky for me, one of them was not having two coaches with twenty threes. So. Is what it is, and like I can understand, I can understand that this big thing is coming for the club, and I think there's probably going to be more people, maybe not in the academy, but in general, <coughs> will suffer because of, I won't say mismanagement, but it, it probably is previous mismanagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, okay. Well, even Stuart Webber said that, hasn't he? That yeah, I'd say it's not. It's, yeah, it's not me saying it, but it affects people when you played. It sounds happy, you wouldn't. You got you. You're worried about Saturday, but yeah, you only see it now when. You know, he's on the other side that affects everybody. It affects people who work at Car Road. It affects people at turnstiles. So you know, yep. being in you know club, have lost a lot of money over the last mm. few years, and it's going to get worse if we don't go up this year. Which, if we're honest, 
it don't look like happening, does it? I mean, it cuts to the in-house team as well. You know, when I was in the office, people were, you know, when we're in the Prem and you go down a, le- a league, you know, you lose a marketing assistant or, you know, you lose a designer or you lose a programme. It just, it, that's... Uh, and that's true. I think that, you know, that, is, that is football, yeah. So, you know, even though it was hard for me, because mm. it's something I've been doing for six years and I've, you know, I had a great relationship with all the players and, mm. and I think I did a half-decent job. So... I was going to say, we saw a lot of players come out after after you, you left saying, you know, good luck, Hux, and, you know, gutted, yeah. gutted and, you know, yeah, I think, that must be really, yeah, I really think, difficult for I think you. the biggest thing my missus was like, oh, they're saying you're a crap coach and all this, and, and so I was like, just, just relax. It's, you know, people well, fans. Say, well, not the fans, just in general. You know, people don't know the ins and outs. Mm. And I'm, like I said, I'm not saying I was a Mourinho or a Pep, because I want, but what I did, I was pretty good at, and, mm. you know, I, I brought something different. Uh, like a a mentality that you've got to have because I tell you it's tough I trying, mean, trying to break into the first team's tough and mm. you've got to be unbelievably focused you've got to be unbelievably fit and you've got to have a lot of ability and, and it's hard to get all three of them at 23 because mm. they haven't got ability or they haven't got mental strength or they're not physically good enough It's you've got to get it absolutely perfect and I think what I hope that the players took away from me working with them day to day and the younger ones I've worked with at 16s, 18s that they saw our hard and our focus and what you had to go through to get to the top. And I'm pretty sure that if they said that about me, they would, that's what they would say. So, yeah. so I, I'm, I've, said, I've worked with every good player and I just got from 23 down to 15 now. So mm-hmm. I've had a, a part of some of it with other coaches, mm-hmm. obviously. But, you know, I'm pretty pleased where, where the club is now from where it was eight or nine years ago because... The academy is in a much better place. I was going to say, much do you, better place. Do you, do you see some youngsters coming through this season, next season? Is there any standouts for you that, that uh, we can expect well, to see? Well, Adam Ida scored that trick the other day. You know, Adam Ida's going to be a good player. Tim Reminds me of Carter Morris looking at him. Uh, a bit different. He's not as, he's not as probably not as yeah. big, but technically he's very good. Okay. He can finish. You know, he scored a lot of international goals already. But mm. we've got, you know, him. We've got. Team other team who's played a lot of 23 football. Glenn Milton, a lot of 23 football. Mm. Uh, we've got two or three eight, each age group that hopefully will mm. come good, but. And it also depends if you're in the Championship with no money, you're probably going to see a few more of them than you would be if you're in the Premier League with a few quid. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. It's like I say, it's not as easy as just our players and chuck them in. Yeah. But mm. we've, got some, we've got some good players, and where we are from now, from where we were eight years ago, we used mm. to play teams like QPR and West Ham and Charlton, and we used to get battered. We used to get beat up. We used to get overran. Now we play them teams and we smash them to bits. Mm. So we, we've come a long way, but we just haven't got as many in the first team as we'd like to share. Mm-hmm. And what is going to be the difference in terms of bedding? Because you, you say that how tough that step up is from under 23s, and I think we all know that. But if we, because we've invested a lot of money into the academy, whether that be through the category one status, that probably hasn't worked to the extent we thought it maybe would. Would you agree with that? To not, uh, probably not to have the, the well, you know, you're looking at one player every year you've got to bring in to, mm. but you know, you look at your Todd Campbell's and you, they're not that, they're not there, but they're not that far off. So mm. the, Jamel Lewis, you know, he came through the camp, so they're kind of close and it is, it's not something where it's going to be there after a year. Yeah. It is, 10 years of work that the coaches have put in to get the whole group standard of all the groups because it's yeah. not just having one good player and having 11 crap ones because yeah. then the one good player don't get he's not pushed so yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to bring the whole standard up and we've done that it's just getting the next few into the first team hopefully I think what, what worried me about you know you leaving for one is that and something that I think reflects on the pitch with not just the youngsters but the experienced players as well this season when the backs have been up against the wall I don't see the fight. I do not see the fight. And again, going back to your days playing, there was players in that team where I just knew if you got barged, you were going to stand up and you were probably going to start on him, right? Or you'd call him a you-know-what, right? And I think we need more of that. And I think that, you know, from the from the bottom level, from the young players down to the top level, there seems to be a, a lack of bite in the team. I think that, you know, we have got some, some players in there that do understand what it means to, to play for our great football club. But... I also think that there's players in there that just don't get it. They just don't get it. Is that is that the 
kind of that European kind of mentality coming through and is that the difference? I just think that's why it's important to have a Darren Huckabee in there to have a player that's been in that era of football that can literally get people up by the scruff and they can say come on let's actually win this you know I'm pretty sure when the probably the German lads come in and the German lads are good as gold Mm. so they are honestly Daniel Daniel's a a top bloke but I honestly don't think they realise how tough the championship was Mm. because Mm. the difference between second division here to second and third division in Germany. It's just a complete... Vast, yeah. The championships are war of attrition. Right? It's the biggest, baddest players that have got to play 40, whatever games it is. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got to be consistent week in, week out. And you've got to be hard, hardened to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, mm. Tuesday. Love him or hate him, that's why Warnock's teams do well. Mm. Because he gets them into that, yeah. way, into that mentality where they're ready to go mm. week in, week out. And, that, and that's... I'm not saying... I don't, I don't think we are there yet. Mm. As That's a, what I'm as saying. Group, I just don't think we're there. Should we do some quick fire questions, Jack? Go for We've it. got a few good quick fire questions. Have you got yours ready? I've got them printed on my Google oh, hello. document. Look at you. Right. <clears throat> best goal. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Your best goal. Yeah. Put the one that gets remembered the most. Care about anyone else's goals, one that gets remembered the most was the one against uh, Man United for commentary. Okay. Mm. Best noise goal. Uh, probably Birmingham I'm guessing Birmingham yeah. that's what I'd put down it's probably the hardest technique wise oh you have to run God. past the seven players it's not the secret source of being an outstanding winger you've stolen my question yeah I know I've only got your uh, question <laughs> I think you've got to be direct you've got to be positive at all times and you've got to have an end product you, you know as we've seen if you ain't got an end product you, you're in trouble so mm-hmm. that's why Sterling has been so good this year because he's added that to his game other than last year Peter Crouch, what's your thoughts? Summarise Peter Crouch in one sentence. Because you signed with him. A freak. A freak. a freak, because he's six foot five and he's got a touch of an angel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he has. He's, 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 for all, he's had the goals, he's obviously scored loads, he's got a Premier League record. You know, his touch and his awareness. He's getting a bit older now, so it's probably not the same, but you know, Crouch is good football. He looks like he can't play football, that's what always but, amazed me. But that. he's got an unbelievable touch and you know, he's, the amount of goals he scored, and not just that, he's you know he's he, he's a good teammate, and he's mm. you know he's a good lad. Was there a point where you thought Norwich would possibly sign both of you? No, no, I didn't think it would sign either of us. Or was it a point of <laughs> really? No, okay. Yeah, I think. Or were you ready to fight him? Uh, no, Crouchy, I'm in, not you. I think uh, Crouch was a different stage of his career. I okay. think you know he, he did come here just to get a few games. So did I, really, but. I think he was always going to go back to mm. go back to Bill and he ended up going going somewhere straight after that in the US Southampton. I think yeah, so, yeah. US Southampton, so yeah, I don't, I don't think he was ever going to sign. Interesting. What makes the perfect Christmas dinner? Ooh, because I've seen. I think w- w- was Mrs. Huck purchasing some some Marks and Spencers kind of ready meals. I, I would. Just, I you would, weren't happy with no, that. No, no, I'm, no, I'm, go, I'm going. The, I'm going the other way around. Okay. I think the perfect dinner is Marks and Spencers. Uh, Mrs. Huck thinks other. She reckons she can do it on her own. Well, I've told her you got one chance. Dangerous. She could be gone. She could. She could be gone by Boxing Day. It's, it's a birthday Boxing Day, so she oh, could be gone. Wow. She should be gone by Boxing Day. So does that mean Blimey. maybe you have you have you purchased birthday presents yet? Yeah. Or does it? Oh, it, but you could maybe take them back. No, no. I get her a crap crap uh, birthday present every year. So it's either <laughs> well, what was the last few years? Hoover. <laughs> I got an ironing and iron and ironing board combo. Oh, that's dangerous. Uh, My missus almost slapped me when I said I was going to get one when we move in together. I just get stuff that she don't really want, but is useful around the house. Yeah, like an, an Af- Lynx Africa gift set. Yeah, well, something that she she could use. And so that's what I do. I do it on purpose. Well, it's practical. And she knows it as well. Yeah, it's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. You know. In that case, if you're a lover of Marks and Spencers. What's your what's your meal for two? What are you going for? You get a starter, a main, a dessert, and then an alcoholic choice, don't you? Uh, so, yeah, so I, I'm I'm very very used. I'm just normally salad and chicken guy. <laughs> you still not changed, have you? Not not all the time, but obviously Lynn doesn't miss up the wine. Okay. So and then the kids would probably eat all the, the other sides. So yeah, Tom's got a, Tom's yeah. got an appetite on him, isn't it? Lee Croft in one <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Because I've seen some banter online, and I'm really yeah. interested to see how you could possibly uh, summarise him. Bearing in mind, I am definitely going to text him everything you say after this. Lovely lad, <laughs> massive, <But>. massive head. 
Thick as pig shit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd go there. Yeah, yeah great, oh, great kid, yeah. great kid, but literally, what a clown. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk us through the hair routine and the beard routine as well, because I feel like this is, it's almost, I think it's probably more finely groomed than Darren Eady. I don't, and, and I don't, that's I'm just trying to grow. I'm just trying to grow it a bit longer before it starts falling out. So that's the reason it's kind of like long and yeah. The beard's just. Is it an Esquire job? Yeah, I do get cut there. Good yeah. man. Yeah, I like it. Esquire Norwich plug. And what do you make of Russ's kind of new? I think he's going for a hook. He's yeah, 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 longer, isn't he? Yeah. No, just before I left, I, I, I didn't say admit to, that. No, yeah. but. I did I think he's trying to grow it long. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, fair play to you. It's me, yeah. he's a good looking lad, he can do what he wants, can't he? No, I, I, when he when he came around for the podcast, he was starting to grow the beard out and I thought, okay, this mm. is good. And then the hair started growing, mm. I thought, okay, he's going hucks now, he's going mm. all hucks on us. And no, then I, I, I see today long. he's gone for the parting in the middle. I saw a photo online of him. Again, he can do what he wants, can't he, you know? Yeah. Club captain, he can do what he wants. He can indeed. That I'm out of quick fire questions. Oh are you? Now. Okay. You, you I mean going. I've got Adam Jury in one sentence, but you've already kind of summarised <laughs> that really, haven't you? Uh yeah, well, you do, give him, you do give him some stick now and then. Oh, he's seen his legs. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you couldn't stop a pig down there. <laughs> down alleyway. No, but seriously, he's a, probably the most underrated. Well, he's not probably my nice fan, but the best one-on-one defender I've ever seen. Really? The only one who kind of came close, and he Rowan Nielsen I played with at Coventry, and he, and he played 130 times for Sweden. Mm. But considering this is not a bad thing, he's. He wasn't the quickest, mm. he wasn't the strongest, but his technique, his, mm. his depth that he could get when he was defending, yeah. his positioning, literally, I honestly didn't see anybody go down the outside side of him. Literally, that's no, how good he was. No. He, he was so good. It was just so consistent. He was so good, and he, he, you just knew what you were going to get week in, week out. And What was he like after he actually scored against Middlesbrough? Because I will never, ever forget that. expecting it, one expecting it. I, I didn't even know he was in the box. What was he doing there? <laughs> what was he doing there? I don't know. But he didn't get many goals, did he? So. No, bless him. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Um, what do you think Norwich needs to do to get back into the Premier League? It's no, I know it's not simple. But... I, I don't think it's all a one. You know, from somewhere we've got to we've got to get a togetherness with the fans and the. Because at the minute, I think it's just stri- it's fractured a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't think it would be because I think with the start, I think everyone has bought tried to buy into this totally, this yeah. new. But it's about results, always is. Mm. You know, I think fans will buy into anything as long as the team's winning. And at the minute, they're not, and and it looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. I'm afraid. So we've got some fans from out to get all the everyone singing off the same in sheet, and then then you've got to hope for a bit of luck. Yeah, I don't believe in luck, so it's not luck. But you've got to you you you've got no to get a, you've, got, you've got to get a team that knows how to play in this league. And on that note of singing off the same in sheet. What are your thoughts on the current atmosphere issues at the club? And, and I mean, if you're in charge, what are, what are you doing? What are you changing? What are you bringing in for the fans to make it better? Or do you think it's down to the players' performances on the pitch? A bit of both. I think the players have got to give the fans so much to cheer about. Because mm. let's face it, when we win, we were winning 3 1, they were there, they were cheering. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I think, the, player, good, no, I think the, players, the players have got. It's not all down to the players. But I think the players have got to give some, the fans something to shout about, definitely. But then, also, the fans, you know, if it's no one at half-time or whatever, then... They've got to back, get behind yeah, them. So, but, but I think, first and foremost, it's the a, it's a players have got to give the fans something to cheer about. And then, when things aren't going so well, that's when the, that's when you need the fans. So, a bit of both, really. Yeah, no, OK, that's fair enough. Um, are you, by the way, you're, you're a bit quiet tonight, Jack. What's going uh, on? Quick five questions is kind of your... OK, all right then, fair enough. Kick. I'll go for another one then. Current city unsung hero, or is there one? Should, can we even call any of them heroes at the moment? Is there somewhere in that? Is there someone in that team where you look at them and you go, you know what? He doesn't get much praise, but he's a blooming good player. No, uh, <laughs> blimey! I think tribal, the tribal came in and had a little spell. Okay, uh, you could say Teddy when he came in, he had a little spell, but mm. you know he's a Norwegian international, mm. so. You know, he, should be, he, should, he should be half, de- half decent. I think Angus has come in and I know he comes come from Minnesota. We haven't played any football before that, mm. and I think he's been very, very consistent. I, yeah. th- I, think, I think the thing with Angus is before when we signed him, there was a lot of kind of as you say, he hadn't played professional football up until that point, and we all knew he what he had so much potential, but there was still kind of thoughts going: Is he going to be good enough for the championship? I think he's been excellent. Yeah, and I don't think he's made 
He hasn't made a mistake. Uh, uh, no, he hasn't made a mistake. For a young kid who's coming in and, and you know, you've, you've got the pressure of coming and not playing before and also that your dad was one of the greatest ever players at the club. So, <laughs> straight away, yeah. Yeah. you know, and he's looked... And your Norwich boy. And all your friends yeah. are watching you play. He's looked rock solid. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's not even one of the goals where you thought, oh, he should have done better there. I think, you know, he's made saves when he's needed to and he's, I won't say he's been lucky, but the goals have got in and I don't think he could mm. do anything about it. So, I think Angus would, could, would be the only one or two at the present time would come out of the season with like a real, mm. real positive. Even Madison, the other, the other. Yeah, I mean that kind of links nicely onto to the next one, really, which is so it's January and you, you've got a choice of keeping one player at this football club. Who is that one player? At the present time, yeah, it's got to be Madison. Okay, but the problem is, do you, do you, you, let, do you let Pritchard go? <laughs> you, uh, you're, you can only keep one player, Darren Huffy. Make your choice. My Madison has been our best player this season. Yeah. So if you if you're saying you want to keep the back, your best player, I would say Madison. But you know, is it is the money going to be that much different from January to the mm-hmm. summer? Up, we've got him on a five year contract from that, haven't we? Mm-hmm. So you know, we'll sell yeah. what it's best for us. I'm guessing. And are you? And are you? You know, if you're Stuart Webber, are you chucking all your money at Angus Gunn to stay at the end of the season? What money? Right. I don't. I don't <laughs> uh, where we are, with all the st- stuff that's coming mm-hmm. from the board. There's no way I know we'll do a bit of keep Angus going yeah. on. Just can't see so, happening? No. No, that's fair enough. That's why I asked the question. But he might, he might, want, he might want to come back. Yeah. And he, he might be able to sort of deal out where Man City are paying all his money. Mm. But you don't get much free in this world, do you? True. And I think, I mean, the, the other thing which, I mean, we've tried to touch upon it in the last couple of podcasts, which is what should fans actually expect from this season and, and and you know I mean obviously like I mean I, I banged on about this right fans need to understand the nature of the, the transition but I mean do they do, do you think that's do you think that's correct is there a certain league position that, that you think Norwich fans can say yeah alright we did alright this season or truthfully I've, obviously I've listened to a bit of Bob's you've said you know, they just say numerous times oh don't worry about anything until Christmas God, never seen anything so yeah. rubbish in my life <laughs> basically, basically after 22 games they're not to worry about uh, for me, you're still angry. No, I just, I just feel that you telling me with the players we got, we should be around Brentford and Preston and teams I mean, like that. Come on, man! There's some rubbish teams in this league. There is. No, there's I some agree. Bobbins teams uh, like yeah, Birmingham, Burton. If, yeah. you, if you get beat by them, you deserve to get away games. And we, me, me and Jack have said it as well. We, we've said you know every team that we've come up against this season, apart from Wolves, have looked monumentally average. The reason yeah. why I've said that is. is there's a lot of negativity going on at the moment. We have ripped literally the whole club. We, we've, lip, we, we've ripped it out and turned it in, uh, inside out and tried to arguably put square pegs in round holes. We have right? that many, rid of that many players. Though. A lot of the players okay. we got rid of last season were the ones that nobody wanted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Besong and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Rudder. Maybe. Even he hadn't, yeah. he, he hadn't been the same but, since 2012. Really, right? I'd say the only one that I thought the fans might be a bit disappointed with was Hassan. Yeah. He, was, he was the only one who, who really was a box box midfielder who could mm. do a bit of everything. And I think we have missed him. I was gutted. I was because gutted. he's a hell of a and we know he is. But oh, that's we, interesting. So would you... So, so go on this, then. This, this team should be... In my opinion, this team, with the players we've got, should be finishing in the top ten. Right. So, so what are you doing about it then, Darren? What I don't play anymore. What do you mean? You can't wait till Christmas. I've got a bit of boots in the car. Well, if, <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. A, can you sign? And B, you know... It's got to down to the manager then. You got well, to them, haven't you? No, I don't think we have to. to, be honest with you. Oh, but, okay. But we're 16. We're playing Birmingham and Burton yeah. in the next week. Correct. If we still start positive there, and I'm not saying you should get, get rid of him, but you know, it's not it's not good enough for this club to be 17th, mm. 18th in the league. And that's why I've said wait till so, Christmas but, because we're playing those three teams. Yeah, but, but, you, but you've also so you've already given away 24 games. Then. So yeah. you're saying it don't matter then? Well, 24 games? No, because no, we've got some points there, Dan. I don't know that many, have I? I? Can't believe I'm having this conversation with you actually. No, I. I, I well, you should say Wolves then. Why did they not wait till Christmas to start playing well? Yeah, that's true. That's I, th- right. I think the thing for me is, is, is it's, it's the strangest season because last year I was I was Alex Neal out from, from the time we lost at Leeds in the League Cup because I saw, for me, <coughs> there was no plan. There was no kind of long-term plan. And at least under Weber and under Farker, I felt, at least at the start, and I still do to a certain degree, there is a long-term plan. I, and I believe if we stick with it, it will work. But as you say, when you've got the likes of James Madison, Alex Pritchard, Angus Gunn, even Grant Hanley, he was a, he's a, you know, a, a, a decent sort of defender. Very good. That shouldn't be a 16th place championship team. No, yeah, I'm, I'm still not, sitting here yeah, yeah. and I'm still not overly sure where to direct 
my anger, not anger, but what what is going on? I don't necessarily think it's Farka. I don't necessarily think it's the players. And that's why I put that expectation question in the room, Jack. Because what what do you expect? I mean, should you you know be with should you be with me and be like patience? It's a new philosophy, or are you like Darren? Are you like well, actually, this is an absolute joke. What the hell's going on? And I and I yeah, I can no, sympathise well, well, with, with I, both. I, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit like you. I, I wasn't You're my team now. No, I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. Mm. But we're better than 16th in the league. I 100% and, agree with and that. And the problem is, if we're not careful, even though I think we'll be more, I'm more enough to, to stay out of it, I really do. Yeah. But it only takes a couple more results. Mm. To get and then, in there. And then the fans start going a little bit more. Mm. And then it's really difficult. And then you, you look and say, how many actual fighters have we got? That's what we've talked about. Well, this right. I think I think it is make or break this <clears> Christmas <throat> because you've got Brentford at home. Yeah, it's not easy, but you should be beating Brentford yeah. at home. Birmingham and Burton, as you say, they're going to be desperately wanting to but pick up home wins. Eleven wait. points on it. Come on. Yeah, and I think they've scored eleven, like 11, 11 goals. goals. I pro- I promise everyone watching and both of you now, if we lose those games, I'll be the first to admit that it's time for the gaffer to go. But the but reason that, why I said that, that I, don't, I don't know if that's the, I don't mm. know if that's the issue. I don't, because we're, then we're just going to be in the place where we've got no money, we've got to pay off some more people, and we and we ain't got any money to buy in the next manager, and the, and the next manager will probably not want to work under a yeah, sporting yeah. director. Mm. Wow, interesting. Well, we all want Norwich City to no, go for us, I mean, don't we? It is, it is a very... I don't think it's... Um... I think it's a brave move we've done. We've, we've, been brave. we've been brave. And we had to be. You know, we, we tried to follow the Huddersfield model. We, we have done. Obviously, he was in four and he'd done the exact same thing. And so far, we've done the same don't, It don't always work like that, does it? Okay. The problem is, with Huddersfield... There was no expectation when they first went there. True. And at the end of that season, there was no expectation for True. finishing the top three. I guarantee if we I guarantee if we're bottom of the or if say we're fifteen, finish fifteenth at the end of the season and we lose four players, because we've got no money. Yeah. But the fans will still have an expectation of being somewhere. Mm. And, and it won't be it won't be knocking around sixteenth, seventeenth in the league. So so where where what is your expectation expectation then? Where where do you think that I think this, I think, should finish? I think we should be top ten. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with you. We should be top we should be top ten. And then there's going to be big, big issues at the end of the season and then we've just got to fight fires and hopefully come out of it looking okay. Okay. <laughs> will it, I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know what will happen in and out, who will go, who will stay, but we know that things are going to have to, mm. something's going to have to be done. Yeah, agreed. I mean, you, you kind of touched on it there in terms of taking a risk. <clears throat> we haven't really talked too much about it. What have you made of this setup? Because we're, what, six months in now to it? The Stuart Webber kind of regime, the change in coaching... Daniel Farker coming in, we I feel like we had to take that risk and I was happy when we took that risk. Having a bit of time now to look back and see what's happened over that six months or whatever it is, are we in a better position to what we were? I don't know, it depends what you're looking for. Was it more of a risk than going to get... I mean, it, when... when go, I, okay, to go and get Warnock. Would, would you have, would you have that? Warnock? I could have signed for him many times, I didn't for that reason, but I'm just saying it... <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Like I, said, I know what we try and do, and but I just don't think it's as easy mm. as get a sporting director, get a German coach. Mm. Everything's good. But in terms of the long term good of the club, do you think we'll be better off? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You don't know what the next two seasons. Mm. If we if we if we're nowhere near the if we're nowhere near the playoffs the next two mm. seasons and we've <coughs> lost fifty million quid, then what happens? I mean, I, I, and this is the interesting thing, right? So out of us three, there we can't say how short term we're going to change the solution because you're saying that it, it's, it's not all of the players fault it's not all you're not sacking the manager at Christmas right. so 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 what then and this is why I've said just be patient because we can't actually do anything about it because we've not got any money and I, and that's I, why I put it in the room and I agree with you in terms of being patient but you also have to realise if we don't go up this season you lose Madison you lose Pritchard Jack, you lose Jack, we're, 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 not, we're not going, going up no that's what I mean yeah. you have to be patient yeah. but if you're too patient you're then losing all your best players well we're going to lose the best players because we're not going up well it's in, in that case I can't see it happening next season then and it's no no we'll be, we'll, season, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be in a weaker place next season than we will be now you think we'll be there next season I think we'll be in a weaker situation a weaker yeah. next yeah. season yeah Okay. well Angus will be, Angus will be gone yeah correct yeah. Madison Possibly. or Pritchard both gone. Wes, 36. So then you're relying on League One strikers and, and that might be the thing we need. You don't know because you look back at you know great players at Norwich City history have often mm-hmm. come from teams where you, yeah. you don't expect it to happen. We're going to probably have to strip it back and then take it on the chin for a little bit. Yeah, but 
You know, it's about winning football matches, and the fans aren't going to sit here and pay good money for season tickets no. and watch crap. I'm well, not we saying, are. I'm not we saying, are at the moment, yeah. aren't we? We're not playing well, but well, well we're certainly we're paying good money, ridiculous money for a season ticket for a 16th place championship team. Oh, yeah, so. but it's been but in the cat side to that in the last. Five six years, it's, you would say it's probably been okay by money. Mm. We've been in the Premier League, and that's been good value. Yeah, so in the it, it goes it goes both ways, doesn't it? Okay, okay. Well, except for that, it's all it's all good. Um, it's all it's all looking rosy, except for the fact we're losing all of our best players and it's been stuck in. The they're not gone yet, <laughs> no. But they've, and they've still got something to prove because we're all playing for something. So straight away, whether they're playing for a better club or or to go to a better club, or they're playing for to stay in this club or. So they're playing for something. Yeah. So the people who aren't in the team have mm-hmm. got to work hard to get in the team. Yeah. The ones who are playing in the team and playing well, maybe playing well to try and get in the move to the Premier League. Or so they've all got something to play for. I tell you what, if we win three of our next four games, I'm going to get a Marks and Spencer's meal for two. We're going to sit down and just have a good time. <laughs> okay. And just I'll get you some salad and chicken. Oh, yeah. cheers. Maybe a glass of wine. <laughs> as long as it's on the right day, obviously. Yeah, you know, yeah of know. course. But we'll just sit down and have a nice meal and a nice chat, and it's all going to be fine. Is it Friday night, Brentford. Let's talk about it. What's going on? Confidence. How are you setting up, Dan Huckabee? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I spoke to Ewan. He saw him play the were like three weeks ago, and he said they were they were good, mm. yeah. really good. Scored a lot of goals. Really, really quick, really quick pacer, yeah, attacking. So, you Is know, Cal's going to score. You like to think that at home, we're playing Brentford. Let's not kid ourselves. It's not Wolves. So, you know, we should be on the front foot. Yeah. Uh, Keyword do you, should do, do you do you change it? Do you bring uh, Cameron in? You know what you're going to get to a certain extent. Yeah. You're probably not going to. You're probably not going to use uh, lethal in front of goal as Nelson. Well, Nelson hasn't been recently, has he? To be fair to him, but you're going to get <clears throat> someone who's going to work the channels, run for the team to mm-hmm. be dropped. Mm-hmm. You know, do you bring Murph back in? You know, what I know, Watkins came in, came on second half. But he, he hasn't really done anything to to keep his place, has he? Mm. Yannick, do you bring him in? Yes. Yes. We love Yannick. Yes. I, I ain't seen enough of him. <clears throat> I ain't seen enough of him to, to make a, a, a proper opinion on him. Because yeah. he's quick, he's strong, but... I, I feel I seen, like... I, 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 I put one good ball into a box. I've but, but scored one goal. Yeah, right again, his final product. Yes, but I feel like Yannick, at least with him, he... And I think it is confidence with him as well as it is with with most wingers. But he will create something in a game. He will, you know, he he takes his man on. He's direct. He's got that in his locker. If he does that enough, he's going to create. But, but something. yeah, no, looking at it really, the last. I don't think he does create anything. I think I think he, he I think he puts. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll say he, he worries defenders. Yeah. yeah, but it's whether he can. He doesn't add, get that ball. Add in, something You're wrong there. Add something to his final product at the end of that. But at the minute, we're just. You know, I don't think we can t- continue to play four tens. No. Mario Vrancic, what's your thoughts? Been better the last few games. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, he's not a holding midfielder. No. Mm-hmm. And he's our fourth best ten. And this is it. We've got, we've so, got a midfielder playing in defence at the moment, right? So, uh, like I say, you know, he's he's just been alright. Mm-hmm. And if I was put in my best ten, in the, it would be it would be fourth place. Mm. Okay, and that's not knocking him, and that's you know he it's just he puts a decent ball in every now and again. He plays a nice pass mm. every now and again, but for me, he's our fourth best number ten. And okay. he's played every game. It's that like Daniel Farker almost kind of gripping on the sentiment a bit because he brought him in as kind mm. of that German man. He's obviously got a bit of cohesion with him. Is he trying a trying to sort of almost? Well, he, he, he obviously trusts him. Yeah, he obviously trusts him. I, I don't know if he's done enough to justify that. He's done okay the last couple of games. He's getting there now, but he, that's the thing. He's done okay. He's hard, even. Yes, he's improved, but he's hardly torn up true. To be honest, yeah, I don't know what he actually does. No, as in, he don't win tackles. He slows the game down. He don't. Pe- people take say chances. he's like that Mesut Ozil, just, like he makes that killer ball. Yeah. Darren, what was your thoughts on that? I don't have that opinion, by the way. Before you jump in on me, and beat me up. He's a poor man's Ozil. Is that what I say? <laughs> Very well, poor man's Ozil. No, no, That's been some of the criticism I've got when uh, I've stuck it in. I a just, bit. I, I just not, not knocking him. I just. I think he's our fourth best number 10. Yeah. I, th- I think he's, as you say, he's been all right. He is getting there. It's just been a wee bit frustrating. Also, something else that's been kind of battered around Twitter this week is, Wes Hulan's dumb. And, you know, Wes isn't good enough to play for us anymore. And things like that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that as well? Uh, I would say Wes is coming to the, coming to the end. He's not yeah. there yet. 
I think it's unfair to play him out wide left or out wide right when you know he's signed up. He's probably never really had the attributes to go and mm -hmm. play them wider areas. Mm -hmm. There's number ten in there. Yeah, you know, Wes will create chances, and he's been in and out, so it's hard to get a run of form and you know a match fitness. The thing is, Madison's playing so well. Yeah, of course. So yeah. I just think it's a bit harsh, really. I think I feel like again. I think you touched upon it uh, earlier, like when we're playing badly, the microscope is on everything. Mm. Like, why are we picking on arguably the best player in the last 10 years that's played for our football club? Like, I, I think it's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. I think I do think we're missing a house and type player. Someone who can do yeah. a bit of everything. Someone who can tackle. Yeah. Someone who can win things under the box. Someone who can drive. Can Harrison Reid not do that, though? No. Okay. Oh, he's, he's an old, old in midfield, isn't he? Old, he keeps it nice. Okay. He makes a couple of tackles, but he ain't going to get the ball and drive. Forwards. 30 yards he's not going to get him to arrive in the box to take chances he's not going to be able to link up play you know we we, 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 we seem to have got Tete Tribal and Harrison Reed who are number fours mm -hmm. sit there break things up and then we've got everyone else is a 10 mm -hmm. and there's kind of no there's no Gerard. Okay. I'm not saying anyone would be as good as Gerard, yeah. but someone who can do a bit of everything can pick the team up sometimes on mm -hmm. the shoulders mm -hmm. And do that kind of stuff. So like. are you going to, are you literally, are, again, like, if you're Stuart Webber, are you going to sell a number 10 in January? Because we've got too many of them. Are we going to sell one? To sell two? I mean, that would probably be the most would disposable it, asset, wouldn't it? Would it help? It would, it would help, but... What area would you strengthen? Let's change the question. It's a tough one, I know. It's, 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 it's not like a key, or it's not like we need a right back or we need a left back. Even though I think we'd probably struggle down the left hand side a little bit. Okay. I don't think anyone, the two that have been playing there, mm. have nailed on a place at all. No. So, but, you know, we're not scoring enough goals. So, and we've got Madison, Pritchard, and Wes Huan are very creative players. And we're still not scoring any goals. Mm. Mm. And that's the thing, isn't it? Pritchard. So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of weird because we've, we've got good players, but we just, everything just seems to be a bit too slow and fragmented, mm. right? But yeah, it's just, it's difficult because I do think Nelson will score goals when he's head mm. in the right place. But surely, if you nurture him, I think he could be a wicked. I mean, you look at Grant Holt, you look at Diego Costa, and and I know you know Nelson probably definitely isn't in that bracket, but he kind of has got that same mentality, that that edge, that that fight, that spark. And again, I love to see that. I love to see someone go in heavy on a challenge to say you know what come on I'm I'm yours I'm going to beat you today it feels like Nelson just we needs need that. a bit of loving and a bit of guidance oh uh, does he need I'll, a bollocking I'll jack look, I was looking at his goal stats and he's only ever scored 10 goals once in his career in the season mm. you said that last so, week you look through I'm, his I'm not looking at actually being a good player mm. but it's not someone who's going to get you 15, 20 goals every season okay. and I and thought he was at start of season because he started mm, off really yeah. well but you can see why he's always moved on or not mm. Cause he, temperament well, it, it, it could be someone who goes and plays in the Premier League week and week out and by, by some of his skills and yeah. flair mm -hmm. and he kicks, he can finish. But then he also will take 15 shots from outside the box when he got absolutely no chance of scoring. Mm -hmm. And it does, it, you, you do look at his career stats and it is a pattern and usually patterns show, you know, that there's truth in that. And it is quite easy now to see why he hasn't ever really settled at a club and why he hasn't scored, you know, too many goals in his career. And you felt like at the start of the season... And when he was linked away and he stayed here, you felt like, okay, he's found his club, he's loved here. And now the fans are starting to turn in him a little bit. You know, he, he gave, I thought it was very unnecessary. He scored that penalty, didn't he? And, yeah. and gave it the sort of cup there. I thought there's, there's absolutely did no Did he go for the cup as well? Josh yeah. did the cup the other week as well, didn't he? I just think, I just think there's, there's no need to create a tension between the fans that is already there. And to be there. fair, our fans aren't, aren't that bad, are they? And we can see no. like, can, I've been in places nice, where yeah. if you can... You know, stuff thrown at you and stuff like mm. that. So it's, it's not. Yeah, but you kind of wound them up a bit as well. Didn't oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You usually do that. Didn't uh, you, you know? Opposition fans. Come on, strong, Dan. Strong. I saw you play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part, part of the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I'm saying it's great. I think, I think we need more of it. Yeah, it, well, it lifts your fans and it mm. yeah, winds them up. Exactly so. right. But exactly he's doing it in the right way because you know, obviously the other day. I'm surprised Nelson's not been banned for. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. The Leeds one. Because I. Two people have been done for simulation aren't they, in, the, yeah. in the Premier League, yeah. so I'm, I'm actually surprised that mm, agreed. They, they might have just been pushed under the carpet. But and I have to say, like I think that we need to make a point in this, Jack, is that we've had a, quite a few Leeds fans saying, 
well, can't believe you're trying to cover it up. And blah, blah, blah. So I mean, as well. we so just, every Norwich fan. We, we, we just need to clarify the fact that we completely. I mean, I'm speaking on both your behalf here. We we think it's ridiculous. Like it it, it was pathetic. I certainly don't endorse it, and I'm not a fan of Nelson for doing. It. I, I like Nelson as a player, but there's just no need there. And I think there, I would again, I would have rather him stood his ground and, and you know well, maybe, it's a big, it's a maybe actually ass, got head. He's a big ass centre forward. Come on, well you know what I mean? he's a big centre forwardish. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Come on. When, when I saw it, I actually tweeted, oh, he got like, blatant, got caught with an elbow <laughs> yeah. and put a smiley face on there. And obviously, Leeds fans were like, no, he didn't. I was like, I was joking, mate. You know, you know, what? You were just trying to sit your bloody Spanish yeah. beer down, down the pub. And, um, anyway, yeah. I, think, um, I think I think we'll end it there because um, we've said everything we need to, I think. Have we? Have we? I mean, do you want to add anything to the table? Um, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Top of and and you've really upped the game in terms of gifts to bring. I mean, come episode 100, people might be bringing us, like, God knows, cars, maybe. I mean, it doesn't get better than Lynx Africa, does it? It doesn't. Not around it Christmas. Really does. no, no, it really, really Christmas. doesn't. It really doesn't. It's something really special. I mean, if you're getting that in your stocking in the morning, you're you're going to have a good Christmas day. And I feel like, I feel, hmm. before today, yeah. struggling to get into that festive mood. Darren, you've brought the festivities to the table. You've brought um, everything to the table, friend. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.